the boat paradise and what we're doing we're making these plates here that we're going to weld tubes to but these plates go here and down there you see that and they screw into this these two by fours basically here and then between these plates we're going to weld a uh, stainless steel pipe going from this top plate down to the bottom plate and there's going to be two of them like that so there's one going to be here and one's going to be here roughly and then those stainless steel tubes will have stainless steel bar 5 8 inch stainless steel bar inserted into them and that 5 inch stainless steel bar will be welded to our tarpaulin supports okay and that's so that we can lift our tarpaulin support out and slide it back down so it'll be removable so there'll be two tubes here going down and there'll be two bars mount on welded to the bottom foot basically of the tarpaulin bracket and those two bars will go down in each one in each pipe so it's removable we're doing that there and we're doing it here also we have a piece of stainless steel going here it's that strap right there that flat bar and down there too and on those holes also and uh, on the center hole we'll have to come up with something but we haven't come up with that yet so we'll figure that one out but yeah so this is our uh, flat bar three inches by one eighth inch thick and then we're marking it and of course cutting it with an angle grinder you know cutter blade so that is what we're doing and I can't hold the camera and do this because sparks are flying everywhere and I don't want anything to get out of hand so I will take that and cut this line right here and then uh, I got one more for this hole and then we'll go over to that hole the other outer hole and do it and cut those four pieces it's four pieces for each hole two for each end where the the tarpaulin support bars uh, brackets go so we will be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan island we're cutting bracket flat bar stuff Everybody, bye for now if you kind of want to know what my technique is for cutting through this this flat bar or pretty much anything I start out with like a, and that's not focused very good, but there. I start out with this uh, groove. I cut a groove, and I'm touching this and it's hot. But I cut a groove there to just kind of get my line straight. I don't cut all the way through and then try to uh, go all the way through because you'll be fighting it. It'll be twisting. It'll be breaking your blade, and you don't want that blade to break. That blade to break. Not focus. That blade to break because when it does, this thing's spinning 13, 15,000 RPMs, and it'll shoot pieces of blade <laughs> into your leg your face your arm whatever don't break that blade so you just kind of uh, score the surface there getting like a nice little groove that you can follow each time and you just follow that groove making pass after pass it just takes two or three passes to really cut through this and then you're good to go so anyway just want to give you that little tip now the only reason I know this that's what all the welders and uh, fabricators that I've seen uh, do they just score it and, and then they go back and uh, follow that score line and that ensures uh, pretty much a, a nice clean straight cut so we'll be cutting some more and be back with my paradise on Italian Island so Bye as you can now. see what happened I cut it and cut it and cut it until it just kind of fell down and then I just bend this back and forth a few times and it comes off then I grind because this little edge here is razor sharp so I take that on the grinder you see all that slag and stuff that'll just slice you into half <laughs> so I, I take the grinder and, and just round all the edges off corners to just do like a little light uh, grind on all that and that'll all come uh, off of there and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, cutting yourself accidentally or inadvertently whatever you want to say so that's it and I and the same with this side I'll do both of these sides before I make my next cut so because like this one this end here is done it's our it's all pre-ground it's all soft and smooth rounded corners it's not very round but still it's 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 enough 
that uh, it doesn't hurt you. See, so we're good to go. Bye for now. Get that in focus. Right, Bye for now. Everybody, what we've got here is we've got we cut two of the pipes, and of course we've cut all of the little uh, flat bar. And so basically, what we're going to have, and we don't have the 5 8 inch stainless steel bar here, but we do have the tubes. So these tubes, see, there's the stainless steel. That's going to be screwed into those two by fours across there, and these will be welded. And of course this one will be straight, it won't be hanging down, but it'll be straight, but I'm just got it kind of propped up there, hopefully it's about to fall. But anyway, it'll be welded to these, and then there will be two 5 8 inch bars, stainless steel bars, going through here. Drill. I'm going to drill out this, we're going to weld it here and weld it on, on the bottom, those are going to go straight through here. They're going to be in line with this, it's not going to be welded on the surface, it's going to, there's going to be a 5 8 inch hole. This thickness here inside diameter is 5 8 inch so they slide perfectly inside there it's a perfect fit so that is what we're working on right now so i got to cut some more of these 18 inch they're all eight, 18 inch these are 18 inch these are 18 inch so everything's um 18 inch so we're going to town cutting 18 inch more oh right here and the way we're doing it it's kind of tricky but i've kind of been watching all the fabricators and they'll mark it and then they'll start with the grinder and then they kind of roll their way around it they don't just start cutting into it because that's the best way to get this blade turned a little sideways and then it grabs and kicks and that blade explodes I just had one explode on me you can see it right down there that one there exploded uh, so uh, just kind of score it and just score it as you go around and score it more and more and more and more, and more once you go through though you can if you drop it in there, it's it, it's going to grab and kick back and shatter your blade and shoot blade pieces through your leg or your eye or whatever. So wear safety gear. But yeah, just score it slowly. Score round and round and round, rolling it. And that'll also get a pretty straight cut too. Pretty straight. I've got mine pretty straight. See, that's pretty much 90, 90 degree cut there. So I'm going to measure this. I'm going to get that angle grinder and a cutter blade and we're going to cut the next one and we got uh, a whole bunch more to do so we will be back with more of these by for now. I got all of my pipes cut and interestingly enough the very last pipe is almost the perfect length too it's uh well, it's like the perfect length but anyway I got all my pipes cut uh, and then there's one extra and it's uh, almost the perfect length so I got two four six eight eight pipes and I really got nine here but that was just uh, the very end uh, of the pipe it worked out to be a, a ninth one so we are going to uh, wrap it up it's about 530 still got my plate still over there two pieces of that and two pieces of this I'm thinking I'm gonna put these two here and here and then I'm gonna weld the vertical upright through the center one here and then I'm going to bolt here and here where it, probably four bolts or whatever I can do uh, that works good in there so we are going to clean up and we be back tomorrow there's our for the other two I, I mean the outer the Port side hole over, over there. Those are the same two of these things here that go over there. So you can see them. And it's kind of cool that we could clamp these on so we really could see how it looks. And it seems to look pretty decent. I don't know if you guys saw that yet. But let me give you a little glimpse of it right there. On the side. Let's see if we can get on the side. There, like that. Boom, boom. So, anyway, that is how the tarpaulin bracket, brackets, braces, supports, whatever you want to call them, are roughly going to be. So, we will be back with more in my paradise on the Italian island. We got them mocked up. Bye for now. Everybody, what we're doing today, we've actually done it, but we're marking uh, for the welding guy. 
all the brackets that these things uh, have like I said there's two 5 8 inch stainless steel rods that go down into tubes here so that uh, this is removable so we uh, drew so you can see our little place that's where the, the stainless steel plate goes that those tubes are uh, welded to and down there too at the bottom so that's why we got these clamped up here and uh, same here same song second verse uh, you can see the marks the little blue corners that's where our stainless steel flat bar goes here and there and then we have two tubes going one going down here and one going down here and then welded into this into this our 5 8 inch stainless steel rod and we added another little bar, another little piece of this tubing like this across here and we run the bar through this one and that one so it gives it a little more strength so it's not trying to flip flop and stuff on us so we're hoping that is enough support that everything's gonna work fine so and that's kind of how it holds the tarpaulin up like that and see it comes over the side of the boat so what water you know would drip off outside the hull not inside the hull if the wind's not blowing <laughs> if it's blowing it just goes wherever it goes but anyway and the shade also so we uh will be back with more this is kind of how See if I can get back far enough that you can get a view, kind of a view here of what we're doing. Kind of like that. Yeah, like that. So, that's it. Bye for now. Tick welding. We're putting another tack weld on, on these guys. There we go. Tack weld did the second uh crossbar i put a second one in to kind of so things don't wiggle so much hopefully you don't wiggle at all but you know that's the whole game plan here so while they're attack welding we will be back with more from my paradise on battalion island yeehaw we're getting these uh tarpaulin brackets welded okay. we're leveling now getting these we got them square with the bottom, and now we're getting them level here, this way. So one that's not going this way or this way, or one's going this way and one's going that way. We're getting them everything square and level. Voila. So that's what we're up to. Bye for now, everybody. What we're doing, we're welding these are the little rods that uh, slide down into the tubes that allow this. Uh, tarpaulin bracket to be removable so what they're doing they're trying to get everything all perfect and square because uh, these have to be perfectly parallel because the tube they slide into it slides into there smoothly but very uh, pretty tight tolerant so they can't go like that they have to be perfectly parallel and these guys are uh, we've been working on this uh, getting everything lined up and I think we're, we're just about there so we got the square make sure it's per perfect and then yeehaw so we will let these guys do some more adjusting and we'll do and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Medallion Island bye for now Hey everybody, you wonder what this is? This is a whole mess of tarpaulin brackets. You see these guys here? This is this part here attaches to the boat. I was going to slide that off and back on, but uh, it wiggles too much. But yeah, this one slides, slides off. You see this? This slides on and off, and this is. This is permanently attached to the boat, and this drops down into these holes. So these are removable because if you want to turn the boat upside down, and this was permanently attached, you couldn't do it because that's five feet tall, four and a half, whatever feet tall, fifty something inches, fifty-three inches tall. Uh, so they have to come off. And if we don't want to run with the top on, or with these there. We'll have to tell you to take them off too, but they're all completely removed. 
with all these little stainless, <coughs> stainless steel stuff slides back and forth. So. That is, and tomorrow we're gonna, uh, he's gonna haul them in his truck because uh, they're, now they're too big to fit in the car with this extra length here. They're too long to fit in the car. He said we can do it today. Okay, right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so I, apparently we're going to load these up and take these to the boat right now. So, we're going to do that, and we will, I think this is my rod here. These are all my pieces of rod, I believe. And my stainless steel. So i got to take those, because I'm going to make jigs out of these and use them for whatever other gadgets that I need to, but... Uh, the propeller shaft, by the way, is this exact same stuff, 5 8 inch, for my propeller. They got different sides, they got half inch, 5 8 3 quarter, 1 inch, depending on how big the boat is and how big the engine is. So anyway, we're going to load these up in that little yellow multi cab and take them to the boat building area. So we'll do that and we'll be back with more from My Paradise on Italian Island. It looks like chrome spaghetti. Bye for now. In our car, we're getting ready to go, and that is the load of tarpon brackets. And we got two more tarpon brackets to make, by the way, but we'll mount all those uh, first. And so, anyway, they're going to follow me, and we're going to take them to the boat. So we'll be back with more hauling tarpon brackets. Bye for now. We had to make some adjustments on these, so we're having to. They took them back to the shop because the the front ones are angled. Uh, the, back, the back of the front one is angled. I don't know why I get that shoppy every time I try to do a video for you guys. But anyway, the back of it is angled. It sticks out. It was an inch, and that was too far. And now we did, got half an inch. But when you weld it, everything bends, so the tubes don't slide in and out like they're supposed to. So we did that. Hammered them a little bit, and let's see how they how they do. If they're ready to slide. Once again, Shoppy shows up. Yeah. Uh, it's getting a little tight at one part. A little tweak here, tweak there. It's amazing how you can bend these 5 8 inch bars by hand, just in mean, very small motions and movement. But ringing a bell. is kind of rubbing on that one or getting tight the top is that is pinching down on there so anyway we're going to continue the tweak and we'll be back with more when everything slides like a, like a trombone bye for now hey everybody you may be wondering what are all these tools doing out on a table well i'm about to tell you what we're doing is actually we're finishing these brackets here. You can see these are the brackets here. These are the ones that the uh, tarpaulin support slide down. But you can see they're kind of like a brushed. You can, well, in fact, you can see all the holes and stuff in the in the stainless there. See how it's all got pits and stuff? It's all shiny. They buffed it. The welder buffed it, but didn't really knock all the all the pits and holes out. So what I'm doing, I'm knocking all the pits and holes out. So it looks nice. Not on the pipes, though. I'm just leaving the pits and holes there and buffing them as best I can. And this little centerpiece, see in there? I can't get my grinder in there, so I can't really grind that down smooth. But I'm just buffing those. But the outer tabs were polishing to make them mirror-like. And you can see the difference. This is one of them I've done already over here. You see? That's, that's mirror-like there. It's got some of the compound on it. That's why it kind of looks like it needs to be 
wiped off, but if you wipe it off, all the compound gets, well, there you can see the mirror light finish there. So that's what I'm doing. I'm grinding these things, all the bumps off. What I'm using is a, I'm going to unplug this before I start messing with it. So what I'm using is a grinding disc, of course. And this is a 320 grit. That's almost perfect for getting these little pits out. Uh, my other uh, cross beam uh, support uh, strips are uh, heavier uh, uh, grain and stuff. I got to turn this over. It's going to slide off on the ground. And so I have to use a, a like a like a 120 on that to really dig deep and get all the grooves out. So anyway, so that's what I hit it with first, and that's kind of what I've done here. You can see all the little sanding lines and stuff. That's what I've done on both of these sides here. You can kind of get the sun to reflect, right? You'll see all the little sanding groove lines. Then after that, I hit it with a 400, a 400 grit sanding wheel. This is a flexible one, but it wouldn't matter if it's flexible or not, but happens to be. It's hard to find these 400 grit, too. You can find 120s, 240s, 320s, but when you get up to 400 and up, up above, it's really hard to find them, but they're perfect for kind of like the finish, next to the finishing touch. Then after that, what I do is I cut some 1,000 grit. See, this is 1,000 grit sandpaper here, 1,000 right there, and I cut it into like squares, and then I cut a little hole in the center you can see this is a tore up one because they don't last long. And then I get several of, of these and kind of stack them, you, you know, in like a rotating pattern so that all it's, you know, offset each one. Get about four of these. And then I put it on top of here. I take this little lockdown thing off. And then I put these on there like that, all of them. I'll leaving this backup plate here because that makes it something to push against. So I put all these on here, and then I put that nut back on there, this little guy. And then I do, do the final buff out with this. But because it's obviously not glued and fancy like that, uh, it kind of tears it up. But it's just a sheet of 1,000, like 12 pesos or something, so I don't care. And I can do two or three of these uh areas like this and that's hot by the way <laughs> uh with that 400 and then i have to cut some more so but i only got four of these things to do and i've already done one so i'm good to go so anyway my next step here after i did the 320 and you can see like i said you can see the lines is to uh, take this off put the 400 on and remove the scratches because this makes deeper scratches and this will remove the deeper scratches and these will be more shallow then the 1000 will remove these shallow 400 grit ones and then i buff it out with this and and my buffing compound and then it comes out to a nice mirror like shine as you can see better and that matches the uh, tarpaulin uh cover brackets because they're polished uh, mirror like uh, stainless steel 304 stainless as you may have seen or will see in this uh in one of my vi videos so i'm going to get back to work actually i'm going to go eat some lunch they uh, uh they have a guy over here that house over there that cooks fries uh chicken every day and then he sells it and so uh, it's pretty good so i'm gonna go eat some lunch and then i'll come back and hit that with the 400 and then uh i'll probably use these ag ag again to just buff out uh, the ones we can, or as long as they last. I've got four, this one, this one, tabs, and then uh, and then we'll polish with that. And it's pretty quick. Maybe one of these brackets is maybe 20 minutes at the most, maybe less. I don't know. Maybe I'd say 20, 20-ish, 20 and it's polished. So we will be back with more polishing the brackets. Bye for now. Hey, everybody. All right, what we have now, I've got all these guys polished. As you can see, they're all shiny and stuff, pretty much. As good as I'm going to get them, but you could... You could... Yeah.
that was scary. <laughs> I bumped the power switch. This thing's turned on. That's a 40 grit grinder. It'll chew everything up. But anyway, I polished them as good as I'm going to polish them. Because, uh, like I said, you could get more of a mirror on these things, but uh, I mean, you could be here for days, and I'm not going to be here for days. It took me one day roughly to knock all these out, and I got another one here. But what I'm doing right now, now that this side is all polished and everything this side here i'm going to have epoxy on here and on here and going to the boat so it's going to be epoxied and screwed and the reason i'm epoxying it is because number one these things aren't exactly straight the heat and they have to be warped some in order to slide pr properly into the the stainless steel rods to slide in here because if these things are tweaked they won't slide in they'll stop you know a fourth away halfway or they'll get jammed and you can't get the things out so right now they're all tweaked so that they are they just slide right in just like a trombone like a slide trombone they slide smoothly so anyway back to the epoxy so this is kind of a smooth semi-polish they kind of polish these at the welding shop and they don't i think i told them not to but they don't get it uh, that part that this is going to be epoxy. The epoxy doesn't stick to slick surfaces. So I'm going to put this 40 grit grinder on the backs of these and put some texture on here to help the epoxy cling to this. And then, of course, we're also going to have screws. Somehow my light is on. I'm not sure how my light is on because I didn't want my light on. But anyway, it's on. I don't know. Doesn't turn off. My new camera, by the way. This is my new uh, Techno. Uh, it's an Indian design. Not from American Indians, but from Indian Indians. And But it's made in China. China. It's about half the price of a Oppo and uh, Samsung. No, less than half. Less than half. The Oppo, with all the features that this has, cost 26,000 pesos. And this one here costs 11. So less than half the price and it's got all the features but somehow the uh, flashlight there the light turned on see the light it's on my hand somehow it turned on when I was using the camera maybe I thought it was dark but, and we'll be back with more from my paradise on Italian Island bye for now hey everybody all right so I ground it and as you can see we've got some texture on here the thing is even 40 grit Still relatively smooth, but that's as much texture as I can put on there uh, without just getting crazy with something. I mean, 40 grit should be uh, have a bunch of stuff in it, but you can see it's got a little bit of texture, but really not what I want. But I'm gonna have to live with that and just epoxy. The epoxy is mainly to fill the gaps because my the two by fours you go against the two by four may end here and then there's a vertical one well this is all you know hand uh cut lumber so they're not all one and a half inches thick they may be one and uh nine sixteenths maybe one and seven sixteenths inch thick for a two two by four who knows so they're they're, they're different thicknesses but the side of the boat is plywood so when you put it up one's out here and one's in here so there's gaps so basically that's why i'm filling in with epoxy behind here so i'm going to keep doing that to all these even though it's not getting a lot of texture it's got some and that's better than nothing so we will grind all those and be back with more for my paradise i'm italian hey everybody Bye for now well you know showing you that we got all these polished and stuff and then i kind of roughed up the back a little bit but my rough up the back process didn't really work with 40 grit grinder wheel but uh in the meantime we i have drilled holes in the stainless and i hate drilling stainless it is just a royal pain i'm telling you i have to use all these drill bits i have to start out with this little eighth inch drill bit here right there then I'm <laughs> up to a quarter inch, which is what I want, is the quarter inch. Then I take this bigger one and I countersink a little bit into there so that the heads, because my screws are, I don't know if you can see that very really good, but they're countersunk screws. So I countersink them into there. And then these are just extra bits in case 
one of these go dull, and they go dull so fast on stainless. You just have to go, go slow. Sometimes you just go, zzz, 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 and you know, let it keep it cool. And that that's that's the secret. Keep the bit cool, because the second that cobalt gets hot, it goes dull, and then you ain't going nowhere. The other thing that I'm going to do, uh, my brother-in-law actually suggested this. You see all the little sanding I did to try to make the the uh, epoxy grip it. But to be honest with you, <laughs> it feels pretty smooth. Even though it's you, you can see all the gouges and it was 40 grit, so it's tough stuff. So I'm going to take my, my cutter blade and I'm just going to kind of score it some, make some score marks kind of across here like that, back and forth. We'll see what that does uh, as far as giving the epoxy something to grip to. So that's my work cut out that's cut out for me tomorrow like i said i got this one done i got all these polished today and i got this one here drilled that took minimum of an hour maybe an hour and a half hour and 30 minutes to drill eight holes and uh, some of these are larger like that one there that tab i may have to drill 10 holes some of them are smaller and I may only drill six holes. See, like these guys here. One here, 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 here. So that's a six hole job. These smaller ones are six holes, and these bigger ones are eight to ten holes. So, anyway, I got my work cut out for me. I've got plenty of cobalt bits here, I hope. And if I'm lucky, uh, we'll be able to get through with those bits and not have to buy any more. The good news is that the handyman, they actually sell these things. And this is a uh, it's 115 for a 3 sixteenths. And so I use a 3 sixteenths. This is a hundred and oh, that's a 3 sixteenths too. This one here is, this one here is a 1 eighth, as you can see. And it's only 63. And the 1 eighth is really better the smaller the bit the faster you can drill your initial hole so i should get about 10 of these things and then this one here is a 5 30 seconds it's 105 so about two bucks two bucks for that and these guys here these big cobalt i bought these at a place called belmont tool these are american and german made they're not any name brand that i recognize but they're just a piece of crap they just burn up and go dull and i mean one hole and you're done with that so these big high dollar 800 pesos seven eight hundred pesos uh 60 to 100 115 really small guys and these small guys are the ones that will really uh, get get you through the first hole and then even if you drill this small eighth inch hole and then you follow up with this bigger hole it's much faster much faster so uh always tap it with a small hole and then go to the big hole so anyway we will be back with more drilling holes and scoring with this little cutter blade the backs of these and see if we can make a little gripper for uh, our epoxy uh so anyway we will be back with more from my paradise home in tiny island oh yeah baby hey everybody bye for now we're here, and I just about got, I don't say just about, but anyway, I've got most of these, the majority of the holes drilled, uh, the quarter inch holes drilled. Again, I start with a, like a one eighth or three sixteenths inch hole, that one right with the camera at, right there, right there in the center, right there. And then I open it up with a, a quarter inch, which is the ultimate, which is the final side that I really need is a the quarter inch the quarter inch uh, hole but the technique I use and I'm going to show you this uh, you can't really go too fast with these high, with these uh, going through stainless steel with a cobalt bit but I'll show you the technique I, I use and I'm not really drilling effectively right now but you'll see <laughs> Just like that, with lots of pressure, and then it uh, it'll get through there pretty quickly. Otherwise, if you try to go full speed, it burns up the bit, 
if you try to go to slow speed, it just seems to get a groove, a smooth hole, and then just starts sliding in there. But you do that with kind of a stop-start at low speed, and it seems to uh, just keep digging its way through, through there, keep digging like that, and it, it goes through pretty good. So that's been my savior, is to uh, go slow and that stop-start kind of a you know, fashion with my drill. Your drill is going to get hot too, so you got to let it cool off every now and then after maybe six or eight holes, because it's just dumping current in, in, into it, and the cooling fans don't spin because you're going slow, so it doesn't really cool the motor, and you're dumping high current through it with your stop-start uh, kind of fa fashion. So let your drill cool down every now and then. So hey, we will finish. I got two more holes here. And well, I got this one, two and a half. And then I've got to countersink. I take this uh, bigger bit here, three eighths inch bit, and countersink on the tops of these. So that, because I've got countersunk screws that are going in there. And uh, that way they, uh, they're not completely flush because this metal's too thin, but anyway, better, better than uh, no countersink. So we will be back with more drilling and stainless man it's a bear hey everybody just want to show you the finished product here uh you notice on the back all the weird swirls i took my angle grinder cutter blade and just kind of grooved just all this stuff just so the epoxy kind of has something to to hold to or to kind of grip to and on the other side we've got all the holes all drilled and as you can see they're countersunk of course we've got it polished as best we can, uh, you know, the areas that we can. I polish the tubes, but again, I can't sand them and grind them because they're round, it's too much work. And in between here, these two, it's still, it's not uh, ground and polished, it's just polished. That black stuff on there is just the polishing compound, so I'll wipe that off. It'll be a little shinier. This too, I gotta clean all this. See, there's some more polishing compound there on that corner too. So, anyway, it just wipes off. So, we are ready. We're countersunk, quarter-inch holes, and we're ready to go. So, that's one finished one. I got all of them done. It took me a couple days to get all that done. So, we will be back with more tarpaulin mounting brackets from my paradise on Battalion Island. Bye for now.